Right, so today we're going to have a look at uh, the new tailor-made Haito raw wedges. So that's a raw finish, uh, different than what we've seen before in these wedges. They've also introduced a lot of new uh, loft and bounce options, so clearly a successful line of wedges for tailor-made. But what I want to look at today is um, wedge videos, uh, they're very difficult difficult to construct and very much sort of opinion led but what I want to do is um, we're going to test these in dry ball conditions in the range and look at spin and control the obvious things but then we're going to take them out onto the golf course and test them in wet and muddy conditions so it's very much a case of range versus reality and see how much impact reality plays on those spin and control numbers. Right, so let's start this review off and tell you exactly what we're going to look at. I've got two 58 degree wedges. They're both the Haito version and they're both with uh, what they call these full face grooves. I like this idea of the raw finish. Again, it's supposed to enhance that control um, as the club ages. And what they're saying, Taylor made is these are especially good in wet conditions. And we'll find that out very shortly when we take them out on the course. But the big deal for me was to ask you a question at this point was, what are your thoughts on them? Because I think it's a bit of a Marmite product, to be honest with you. The colour is quite different than what we've seen from many golf clubs before, but also this kind of high toe version. There are a couple of types that exist already in the marketplace, and obviously they brought this out last year. And the fact that, as I said in the intro, that they've uh, sort of broadened this range, so I think it's now 56 to 62 is available with those full face grooves. And then in the, in the sort of, I think it might be 50 to 56, it's a kind of regular pattern that you'd be used to seeing. So that tells me that they're doing very well. But what are your thoughts on these visually? And is it a type of thing you're considering putting into your bag this year in terms of your wedges? Right, so as I've already said, I'm gonna use these 258 wedges. They're very much different in terms of uh, the sole, but in terms of the, the groove pattern, very much identical. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit, we're on real balls today, we're back on the seed ball, the uh, SDO2. We'll see how this performs off this uh, sort of false environment, off the mat in the range. And then I'll take exactly the same ball outside into some wet and muddy conditions it's just been raining and we'll see if and if there are any changes when we go out into what is real conditions so i'll start things off with the 58 standard uh, wedge and then we'll move on to the high toe i've got a green set up at sort of um so for me a 58 yard uh, a 58 degree wedge it'd be a sort of three quarter swing 80 to 90 yards is the kind of region i'd be looking for so we've set a target up in the distance and we'll see how this thing performs. What it does in terms of reaction and what, what it does in terms of spin. That's an interesting start. We've got a, uh, a target line set up and that's, uh, that's pretty decent. I will carry on hitting balls and giving you an idea. I mean, the one thing I like about these, um, these high toe wedges and what they produce, they look superb, I think, in terms of this kind of copper finish. But I like every neck in terms of uh, the way the, uh, the shaft is fed in to the, to the hosel. It's sort of set back. It gives you loads of variety in terms of uh, the shot type you can play. But they really do sit very nice at address. All that club face is on offer and on view. And they're quite confidence inspiring. And dare I say it, I don't know why, but it's not a kind of club you think you're going to shank. I've tugged that one just a little bit down the left. I'll carry on hitting balls with this. We'll switch over to that uh, other 58, the high toe, which, uh, sorry, the big foot. They've got some great names this time around, Taylor made, but they've got the big foot, which again is that wider sole, different bounce altogether. We'll see what that does in terms of the mat, but I think where we're going to see the benefit of that and what I've seen with those kind of, uh, the bounce on those soles is the, the um, outside on the course. That's where I've seen it a great assistance for me in my own short game. But like I said, We'll back that up with a bit of data and uh, take a closer look at it a bit later on. Right, we've ventured out onto the, uh, what is a par three course at the back of four golf. And to be honest with you, they've done a great job in this last uh, 12 months or so in getting this in some great condition. And I think what we'll end up doing, we'll be doing a lot of the filming outside here in terms of the club testing and getting, like I said, some uh, real data. We've got conditions like this that aren't exactly, um, it's not, we're not in the rough. We're just, uh, we've got a bit of grass that's involved and not the clean lie that you would find obviously within the range. And I want to see what kind of difference it makes in terms of that spin number. I've already hit sort of five or six balls up there. Uh, we've paced out 80, just over 80 yards. And I'll see how we get on in terms of uh, what happens, like I said. 
With just a bit of turf interaction, I love testing dry ball data within the range, but as you know, that mat can sometimes be a little bit of a help. It sort of slides the club along an impact and uh, nothing like this where you're starting to produce a few divots and thing. It's a different game altogether. It's not a bad clip, middle of the green, is it? What I like about, and in particular, I always go to this, uh, this sort of uh, the Bigfoot version because I love the way that sole sits. And like I said, to be able to just cut through the turf, I find it for my type of swing, the way I, I pick up a ball fairly clean, little bit of a divot there, but a fairly clean contact is the way I play wedges. And I find it a great assistance. And in all honesty, I've been impressed with the way it's picked the ball up from these kind of lies. I'll let a few more balls and collect data uh, from this same position. And then to finish the video off, I'm just going to play out of a little bit of longer rough and again, see if any impact at all from these grooves that are uh, that, that right across the club face. Are they doing anything at all? And we'll, we'll give it a little bit of a go a bit later. Right, so final part of the test is uh, it's in the rough. We're not nestled down in the rough, but it's the type of area where you'd be looking to take a 58 and uh, attempt that kind of uh, flop shot, if you like, which is what you've seen with the balls that I've put on there so far. First couple were in kind of low open the club face up on the last few and you see it pops it up quite nice you actually feel a great deal of control i've always like i said i've been a fan of these wedges since they released them last year but um certainly with the flop shot like i said it feels like there's some kind of grab there it cuts quite nice through the turf and i like what it's done but the interesting bit for me and the surprise bit i think you may have heard the last comment i made uh, on the clip when we were kind of off camera gathering the data was this is interesting and it certainly is because the one thing that will surprise you is the spin number that's been impacted on those shots that I've just hit so far and I'll bet you it's nothing like what you think it is so make sure you hang around and see what they're well, we'll see what they are at the end you'll be shocked You'll be more than shocked because that spin number is incredible. Right, one of the most interesting uh, reviews that I've done, and uh, once again, thanks to Trackman, we've got some unbelievable data that has uh, really highlighted some major things for me, and I'm shocked, I'll be honest with you. Um, we started off collecting dry ball data inside the range and uh, hitting, like I said, three quarter swings, 80 yard pitch shots was the kind of area we we're trying to get into. And it did exactly what we'd expect, a very high spinning club, uh, 10,000 revs on average spin. Peak height was where you'd expect it to be, that uh, descent angle means this thing is coming down and uh, stopping very, very quickly. But it was when we moved outside, and this is something that I've wanted Trackman for, it's one of the things that really appeals to me and I think will appeal to you in terms of what it can provide and put some reality in this whole situation that collecting data from a bay is mega important, but as I've said already in this video, range versus reality is a totally different thing altogether. And when I put these numbers in front of you now, you'll understand exactly what I mean. So what you're gonna see now is the numbers for exactly the same wedge outside in a very much a clean lie, but this is what happened. The spin number literally halved. 5,000 spin as opposed to 10,000 spin. Carry distance remained at uh, bang on the 80 yard mark, launch angle changed just a little bit, peak height was the same, land angle was almost the same, almost identical in every other aspect apart from spin. And it, not only did it make a difference, it literally halved that number. Huge, huge difference from again, what happens in the range and what happens in that real situation. You've seen the lines we played from, nothing major, but that's where, that, that's the reality of what happens on a golf course. And I've said for many years whereby reviews are put out on, on channels such as mine and there's a lot of criticism about, let's take a game improvement, strong lofted iron, and oh, we can't play them irons because the spin number's ridiculously low. And, and, and I always say the same, what happens, I've never really played any iron that I take out on the golf course that I've seen have a major difference between one or the other when you take it on the course in reality. And you see what impact that reality has on spin and the performance of a golf club. And it's a huge, huge difference. And I don't know about you, 
maybe you're not as surprised as I am, but I am literally, I, each of those clips that I took in the five shots we recorded outside, I was more than happy with them. It wasn't a case that we were chunking these things, they were relatively clean uh, clips off the top of the ground. So again, no major impact, but that's the kind of difference it had in terms of spin. I wanna throw you then just uh, one more curveball into the equation and we played those sort of short shots from again from the rough but nothing really nestled down you're still able to play a relatively easy kind of chip shot uh, you've seen the first few and here's the data in front of you now those first three shots you'll see the peak height um, or first two rather relatively low and then we change and open the club face up a bit you see the ball pop up a little bit see the peak height change but again just look at the spin number and don't forget this is rpm revs per minute this ball is in the air for a very very short space indeed uh, of time indeed but that average spin number two and a half thousand revs when it hits the deck and uh, it's really interesting to me again what impact it had i'd like to see i mean the test you could go on forever we'd like to see a number of wedges played from that exact same scenario and seeing what impact it had on their wedges but i think a huge emphasis played on one aspect of a club's performance can often be the spin number. And I think for me, we've just got to be a little bit more balanced in the way we look and review clubs and realize that, yeah, it's an important factor, but to a degree, and how much real impact does that have on where the ball finishes when it lands on a green? There's so many other things to consider. And in this case, just a little bit of grass and mud made a massive difference to what uh, happened out there on the golf course when recording data. So I'm not gonna go into any more detail on that. That's enough on this one. I hope you enjoyed it. We're trying to, like I said, take, um, Break down a review in as many aspects as we can without dragging it into sort of 25, 30 minute videos, but bring you information that I hope you find useful. In terms of the clubs themselves, I think it's a fantastic range from uh, tailor-made of wedges. They're, uh, they're slightly specialist in terms of the way they look, and I think that's gonna be down to the individual uh, in terms of whether they appeal, and also how it fits in your bag, because these are generally, I prefer them down that sort of higher lofted end. I like the high toe, and I like the idea of having a 56, 58, or 60 in the bag, and I think that's where these things really come into play uh, and appeal to me on a personal level. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. One last thing that I keep forgetting and we don't mention too often is that uh, you've probably all disappeared by now, but I'll, uh, for those who are still around, if you're considering buying these clubs or any club right now, if you're a member of the Average Golfers Club, which we set up probably, uh, whatever it was, two or three weeks ago now, you get 10% off of all these clubs. So there's no kind of... Um, there's no limitations, there's no products off limits. All these products that I review, if you buy them through Four Golf and you're a member of the Average Golfers Club, you save 10%. And it's a considerable saving, so it's important that I keep letting you know that. And there'll be a link below uh, to let you know how you go about doing it. Anyway, for this one, thank you for watching. Uh, we've got some real interesting stuff that we've already recorded, and uh, it'll be with you very, very soon. That's a wrap. Peace out.